This is the story of Paul Gilly, a physical giant. His songs made Hank Williams a musical giant. Paul Gilly was a fascinating fellow. It's an intriguing story. He, he wrote poems to start with. He saw there was money in writing poems or lyrics to songs. He didn't write music. He just wrote the lyrics. So he began going to Nashville and selling those songs for $50 for three or $400, which is pretty good money back in the early 50s. Lynn Nickel is a local historian and has written several books about Morgan County history, including one on the life and career of Paul Gilly. And um, I, in the book, I have some letters that Gilly had written where he states that he had written Cold, Cold Heart and Overlook the Norcott, some of those songs that became famous songs in the country music field. He was a great writer of country music, but he never got any recognition for it. His name is not on any of those songs. Paul grew up a few miles outside of West Liberty in the small community of Maytown. Throughout the 1940s, he attended school first in Ezell and later at Hazel Green Academy in nearby Wolf County. There are a few things that his classmates and contemporaries always remember about him, his winning and fun personality and his height. We lived a mile from the school, so he came home with my brother, and he was there a lot, so he seemed like an extra brother that was great having, because Paul was... He was so easy to get along with and such a nice person. When I knew, first knew Paul, he was going to school to Ezell. He was very tall and he played basketball then. And uh, that was the first time that I'd ever seen uh, the alley oop. He would get close to the basket and the other boys would pass him the ball and he'd just put it through the hook. Paul was basically a family, a close family friend, and everyone in the family adored him. Uh, he just had that type of personality. And though he was six foot nine inches tall and, and to a small boy as I was, he, he looked like a physical giant, but there was nothing threatening at all about him. He could speak and rhyme. We could be carrying on a conversation and he could make every sentence rhyme. He had that gift. That was part of his thinking, uh, you know, getting things to uh, rhyme and sound good. My sister went to Lee's Junior College and uh, I had heard that he kind of had a crush on her. And we'd ride to see my sister and one night while we were doing that, he said to me, I'm going to give you this paper. I want you to keep it because there's going to be a song come out. It's a song I've written, and you'll know that I did it. And when I opened it, it was, they'll never take her love from me. In the late 40s and early 50s, it was common for songwriters to give up all rights when they sold a song. So Paul's name was replaced by the artist who purchased it. But it was common knowledge in Morgan County that Paul wrote sometimes with the help of Carter Gibbs, many country music classics. I guess I would consider the first and more, most important song that they co-wrote together was I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. And uh, of course I have a, an original hand printed copy of that in dad's hand printing. Paul Gilly had uh, met Hank Williams at the Nashville Bus Depot on June 17th, 1950. And from what uh, Mr. Filippo writes in his book, Your Cheating Heart, during that meeting, uh, Paul sold Hank Cole Cole Heart. Why can't I free your doubtful mind and melt your cold, cold heart? Another love before my time made your heart sad and blue. I imagine that Hank wasn't very accustomed to waiting on people by that point in his career. He knew who Paul Gilly was. He knew how talented a songwriter Paul Gilly was. And having already recorded some of Paul's songs, and one, of course, being I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, which was a, a, a major hit, 
I think he was anxious to see what this young boy from Kentucky had with him this time. And sure enough, Cold Cold Heart was not only a, a song that I believe kind of filled Hank's pocketbook, <laughs> but it also uh, did a lot to cement his career, his legendary singing career. By the late 1950s, Paul and Carter were promoters for several up-and-coming bands and were beginning to get credit as songwriters. But on June 16, 1957, Paul drowned in a farm pond in Maytown. He was 27. His mother, in a fit of despair, burned all of his papers and much of the hard evidence that points to Gilly having written some of the great songs of country music was lost. The book is based on his character. Every person I talked to about Paul Gilly that knew him, grew up with him, he was a sterling character. He was a person that people believed. He was trustworthy. I like to see him get credit, even though his name's not written on the sheets of music, but especially in this area. Lynn's book about Gilly is introducing Paul to a whole new generation and the community remembered him with the first annual Paul Gilly Day in June 2012. Paul's friends and fans want him to receive credit for his writing without taking anything away from the performers who brought his songs to life. Paul and his contributions to country music have never been forgotten in Morgan County. His good nature and outsized talent, coupled with his tragic death at a young age, has earned him a permanent spot in their hearts and memories.